Hey everybody, uh, we are up here in beautiful Dayton, Kentucky on the hilltop. I'm gonna flip this around and show you what we got going on here. So, this is what we're working on now. We have a really nice mansard slate roof. Box cutters down below. And over the last two months here, we've been working on these chimneys. Now, they're a little rough. Uh, I'll tell you about this. That's on purpose. First off, this is traditional masonry. So, similar to the rubble walls that you see inside of the house itself, this is a three-width brick load-bearing building. Uh, and much like that brick, we use the same brick that was inside the chimney. So. That's why some of them are pink, some of them are red. Basically, one of these was knocked over in a tornado at some point, uh, I'm gonna guess in the 60s or something like that. And they rebuilt it with uh, Portland-based cement. So that whole chimney was rebuilt and all of those bricks were stuck together and essentially it became a giant monolith. Now, what we did is dismantle both of those saw all of the concrete off the brick and replaced the broken ones with salvage brick. We had about two pallets of salvage brick to make up uh, the brick that we lost due to the Portland cement and the repairs that have been done over the years to these chimneys. It's unfortunate because the people that were working on them, they didn't know any better. So it's not really their fault that they didn't know what they were doing. They did the best work that they could and actually their brick work is straighter than mine, but that's not really the point here. Um, because with a rubble chimney like this, or any sort of rough chimney, this thing would have had a lime wash on it, similar to the finish that's down here. So, plan for this guy, the permanent plan for the finish for this chimney, is to, of course, after that paint starts to spall off over the years, put a lime wash on this. Good thing is the way they built this house, all of the gutters and access points uh, are really smart. It makes it super easy to get access and be able to maintain these things like that. So this whole chimney can be lime washed after the fact uh, once it gets a little age on it. That'll be a permanent finish for it. That needs a little bit of, a um, little bit of maintenance every now and then. Now down below here, this is the next phase, so uh, we had a storm come through yesterday. We took the bubble off, so I've got a little temporary rhino on there right now. I'm probably going to be pulling that up and reusing it on the wall here since we want to reuse all our materials we can. That's a pretty costly material to the environment, so we don't want to waste it. We'll be pulling that up and trying to use it on the wall here. We got a clearing for the next couple of days, so we'll be able to do that. Um, this is what we're working on right now. So what we're going to do in lieu of stripping all of this paint off, which is, you know, again, the people that were working on this place, they thought they were doing the right thing. But in the case of this, we're kind of stuck with a whole bunch of layers of paint on it. So if we just break it down and what's the best thing to do with this? Well, you know, we can't really power wash it because the slate's too delicate. We could leave them in place because actually this wall is functioning, even though they're painted together, which is really bad for slate. The wall's functioning uh, and it needed a little bit of repair. So we're going overboard here, but the reason is, is we had to take all that apart and all that apart and all that apart up there just to be able to put in the new metal work. So seeing as how we're taking off a third of this already, it made sense to go ahead and process the whole wall. So we got slate and guys, I'm sorry for the Blair Witch camera. I'm going to get a new gimbal out here as soon as I can. I am going to prop you up. I hope you can see me. So that'd be a good ring. That is, that's a slate. That's a sound which tells me that this slate is vetted for under 200 years on the roof. That's all I need to know. 
to ensure when I put this on, it's gonna last. There's another good ring. So all these slates, that one's got a little bit of a thud in it. Not as strong as the other two rings. Even lower. Still pretty good though. That one came off the top of the roof. Oops. Let me get the camera back here. Uh, it's telling me to rotate my phone. Hope you guys can still see me. Gonna do a little more slate ringing. Oh, there's a real thud. So, if you compare that to what you have here, you can hear the difference in the sound. And I can feel it in my hand, in fact, in the vibration when I tap on that. And if I look down the middle of this slate, I can see a hairline crack forming. Now, I could have laid this slate. I could have nailed it back on the roof probably just fine. It's still pretty sound. It's got some, this is a 50 year slate, you know, it might last one, one guy walking on it one time. It's already got a little bit of a crack on it. So, um, that one, that's the difference in culling from the sound of popping them. I can tell right away that's going to last. That's not going to last. Um, you have to do that on every single slate after every single action so after i cut it i'm gonna cull it pop it see what the sounds like if the sound is good that of course means it's still good to go on the roof so to give you an example there is our suspect let's go ahead and try to cut it i don't know if you guys can see or not I don't have two hands right now, so I can't really support the slate like I'm supposed to. It's just kind of hanging over the edge. All right, so now we got our pecking started. That'll come right off. I've never done this one-handed before. This is interesting. So I'll show you guys how to do it one-handed over the side of a board. All right, so that little bit of sweat and work, I mean, when we got a slate that's worth two bucks, three bucks here, and then a couple picks with my hammer, and we've now got a cut. Now, I still know this is only a 50-year slate, and this is 100, 100, 100 older, so why would I go through all the trouble of pecking and trimming on a slate that's already not ringing? True. So it's still got a thud to it. Even after, even after all that work, what that tells me is, is yeah, it, it doesn't sound any different after the cutting, but it still wasn't that good to begin with. And there's the fault in the slate. That was the thud, the low sound that we were hearing. So I could have laid that, I could have put it on the roof and it would have functioned, but it would have not have functioned as long as these. And all we need to do is open our ears to know the difference. So this is what I would say 80% of the market in slate roofing is not doing because they just put the tiles on the roof and they move on with it. If you're not hearing that ring, ring, ring sound and the culling process as the majority of the noise involved in putting a slate roof on, then they're not actually doing the work. They're doing essence of slate roofing, which chances are you're probably getting charged the same amount. So, with that knowledge, choose carefully. Uh, there's only people that read the Slate Roof Bible and understand what Joe Jenkins wrote about slate roofing will know this inherently. Because um, what he said in there is really all that matters as far as the culling process. Um, of course, there's a lot and there's a million different ways to do slate and no one's an authority on that, but he was an authority on understanding the culling and how that actually makes a good slate roof. So hats off to you, Joe, for everything you've done for the trade. Um, I am gonna put the camera down because I don't have a gimbal. Uh, I'll let you guys see the lovely view one more time. Kevin, those seams are just for you, man. <laughs> we'll get to those later. Uh, Hey Michael, what's up? We're about to pull some slate.
off the mansard here. Got the other two sides stripped, chimneys are up, and we're rolling. So guys, I am gonna wrap this little vlog up and get to work.